Check out these anti-vegan balance pretending to know about nutrition. And when we've had clients that have been devout vegans and they come in here, what we're talking about, and they begin, to, they finally begin to understand the truth about the rubbish they've been told about B12. And when they finally begin to understand the truth about amino acids and they go, okay. There is nothing wrong with supplemental B12. Most of the B12 found in animal products is in supplemental form anyway, due to the unnatural way that we raise factory farmed animals. And who the hell are you to talk about amino acids? I've not eaten animal flesh or consumed their secretions for the best part of a decade and I'm twice your size. Bless him, he doesn't understand that the amino acids in meat were from the plants that the animal ate in the first place. We've had vegans have massive health turnarounds from, from having fish or meat once a month. Oh really? Were that even to beat you? I'll tell you exactly why that is. Their diets were They may have been vegan by virtue of the fact that they were eschewing animal products, but they simply wouldn't have been eating enough nutritious food. Most vegans eat a junk food diet instead of getting the majority of their calories from legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds. Don't just use the word vegan to describe someone's diet. It highlights your nutritional cluelessness to the rest of the world. Magic, boom. And if meat really is magic, you'll be able to name me the nutrient or nutrients that can only be sourced from it. For some reason though, to date, nobody has been able to inform me though, so I'll not hold my breath for a response. The only thing going boom from eating meat is your heart. The scientific consensus is that sat fat, trans fats and cholesterol from meat lead to the number one cause of death in humans, heart disease. But for some reason, you two think that you're cleverer than the greatest scientific minds of our time and live in backwards land. There's plenty of stories if you guys want to hear the story of Elise and Tim. Stories? No thank you. Intelligent, scientifically minded folk don't deal in anecdote. Elise Parker and Tim Sheaf ate highly restrictive diets, one of them enjoyed nice piping hot glasses of wee wee, and both chronically under ate calories. Show me a study where thousands of vegans eating a healthy, balanced, calorically adequate diet failed. Arguably the best data we have on this topic is from the Adventist Health Study 2. The vegans outperformed the meat eaters in every single way. Talk about that. You know, they had millions and millions of followers. I wouldn't call 170k YouTube followers millions and millions. Poor f can't get anything right. Tim was actually in the Game Changers and asked them to remove his footage. Having been involved in the film myself, I was in contact with producer James Wilkes. Tim needn't have worried. The edit was finished before he got in contact with them and he hadn't made the final cut. And, and Tim's story is famous. He's the guy who made headlines all over the world when he you know talked about the fact that he had this first wet dream in five years the night after he ate salmon yeah he was a bit of a laughing stock hey poor dude should try and get laid now and again like most people i didn't have a wet dream since my teen years and i ate far more animal products than tim including salmon three times a week what a moronic thing to talk about to try and discredit veganism clutching at straws much at least described brain fog and complete yep loss of libido and recovery within days. Yeah, she finally got adequate nutrients in there, so what a surprise. Only trouble is she's now risking 14 out of the 15 leading causes of death. Had she have done it in a healthy way, eating a whole foods plant-based diet, supplementing B12 and getting some sun, she could have had the best of both worlds. You're ultimately, you may be a doctor. He's really not, he's just a psychiatrist, look it up. Not that doctors usually know the first thing about nutrition either. But ultimately you're a scientist. <laughs> if he is, he's not very good. You understand that if you want to conduct an experiment, you have to have all the things controlled and have one flex, right? You're testing one thing. And that's the biggest problem we have with food science. I will agree on that point. So what happens for a lot of people is they're on the standard American diet. They're medium healthy. They don't know that they're not healthy. They don't realize they have pain and inflammation because they kind of just get used to it. Again, totally with you there. And then one day they decide they want to lose some weight and somebody goes, you got to become a vegan and go on your water fast and you got to eat your wheatgrass, like, because I have four stomachs. Well, you could always choose it like a normal person. But I, okay, so I start doing it. The biggest thing is, is that I've stopped eating processed food. I've stopped eating dark garbage fats. I've stopped eating rubbish meat. He says rubbish meat as though there's other meat that doesn't have sat fat and cholesterol in it. 
and all of a sudden my acne's gone, my eczema's gone, my this is gone, my that's gone, my inflammation gone. Look, I've got a six pack. It's cause I'm, and none of those changes, not one of those changes changes your identity except removing of the meat. When you remove the processed food, you don't become a non-processed fooditarian. When you remove the, the, the ridiculous trans fats, you're not like a, a non-trans fatitarian. <laughs> Wait a minute. You do know that all meat contains naturally occurring trans fats, right? Oops, just shot yourself in the foot there, didn't you? But when you remove the meat, they've done it so well. You have an identity. So all the changes you made, you made a hundred changes and one of them changed your identity. And now you're a vegan. And so you believe that your identity changes what made you healthy. And it wasn't. A whole foods vegan diet is the only diet clinically proven to reverse heart disease, which as I said, is our number one killer. If you're right, you'll be able to cite a meat-based study which was able to do likewise. As there are none, you have to concede that you don't have a bloody clue and you can't back up what you're saying. Next. What's that? No more bell-ins today? Okay, now click this.